right, I want to organize my thoughts on this one, so I'm just going to do a video for the sake of I need to talk and figure this shit out. Specifically, I'm talking about STD, Star Trek Discovery, which uh, from now on is just going to be STD to me. It'll always be STD to me, whether or not I like it or not. And that I, is why I want to do a video, because I can't... I, I don't have a clear answer to that. You know, was, is it good or not, I guess, is the question. And I don't know. Um, as an aside, I am still sick, because I'm always sick now, and I have a migraine, so this is going to be amazing. I finally saw it. Um, I was very reluctant to see it. I was reluctant to pay for it, I'll be honest. The fact that you can't watch this without paying for it, legally, is is problematic to me simply because of this. If I had a fantastic new show, and it was a pay service, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that, uh, morally or anything like that, there's you know lots of different ways to sell, produce, and so on, different shows, that's, that's fine. The fact that you had to get the CBS All Access to watch even the pilot, I thought was problematic because if your show's amazing, then you should be, by all rights, giving someone a free taste. Like, hey, here's the first episode, or here's even here's the first half of the first episode for free, or here's 15 minutes of it for free. Do you guys not trust your own show? And from what I understand, they kind of had like a, a, like a commentary blackout. I forget what it's called, where they don't do previews, and they when they do do previews, they don't let people, just anyone, talk about how they felt about the show. So, I mean, that, impli that implies to me strongly that they don't really believe their show's that great, or they're worried that it's going to get bad word, word of mouth, which perhaps they should. Thoughts about this show? Let's start from the beginning. It, I think it looks great. I've heard both. I've heard some people say it looks great, other people say it looks shitty. In my opinion, I thought it looked really good. It doesn't have the look of a TV show. It, it's much more movie-like. They spent some money on sets. And I'm going to change course real quick in the middle of this sentence and just say, I strongly suspect a lot of the reason that the first two episodes, the, the pilot, which is two episodes, that the reason it is the way it is is because, from what I understand, this was originally one show, and they scrapped the script, rewrote the hell out of it, and just essentially made it into a different show. I'm wondering, if you haven't seen this and you don't know, the entire pilot, the first two episodes, are one ship and its crew and our point of view character. And apparently, going forward, the rest of the show isn't about any of them, except for the point of view character and maybe one or two of the other characters. So, the pilot isn't really the pilot. That's, that's kind of weird, and I suspect it's because they switched gears. Like, maybe... They were keeping as much of the old footage and, and so on. Like, maybe they had, like, the show was supposed to be this, what we saw in the pilot. They switched gears, but they wanted to, because clearly they spent a lot of money on sets and stuff. Sets, costumes, special effects. If nothing else, the show looks very good. But I can't complain about that. I love the look of the ship that I think is ne never going to see again. And the other ships, I thought everything looked beautiful. I thought it looked just fine. I've heard people complain that the stuff was over-designed. I'm like, eh, better over-designed than under-designed. Something that looks cheap and crappy and looks like it's on a uh, just a regular network TV show will bother me more than costumes that are just too busy or too overworked or whatever. I mean, if I have a choice between the two, I'll take the latter. I didn't care for the point of view character. Like, she has this complicated thing she's doing, and I don't care. I don't care. If you haven't seen... I mean, going through this, the characters a bit, if you haven't seen the pilot, I'm not going to have spoilers for it. Everyone else is doing spoilers. I'm not. 
because you could see it at any time, at any moment. You could just say, ah, fuck it, I'll put in the six bucks and watch the stupid all-access thing. Or if you're an international, like you're not in the U.S., you could just see it on Netflix, apparently. <coughs> but here's the thing. Going down, point of view character, Michael Banks or someone. Michael. Her name is Michael. I don't like her. I, I don't care about her her troubled past she has generic troubled past of families. She has the Bruce Wayne backstory. It's like, I don't care. Maybe they haven't set it up enough. I don't know. I don't care. The thing is, Sarek, you know, Spock's dad, was thrown in there as a character. And I'm not hearing anyone else talking about this. I thought the actor for him was pretty darn good. There's a way Vulcans are kind of portrayed. It's like they're supposed to be super logical, so they're always portrayed as being very cold, and just emotionless, just flat. Not not even cold and emotionless, flat. Which is kind of easy for an actor to do, and it's really not all that impressive. It, it There's a certain challenge doing a Vulcan well, or that kind of character well. And I think the actor did, did a good job, because he, he's very clearly someone ruled by logic and self-discipline, and yet he's a snarky asshole. He, he comes across as clever and very insightful, but not a very benign character, but clearly, he, I mean, it's a complex character. And I'm in favor of complex characters. I actually like Sarek more than the point of view character. I like Sarek more than Michael, like, by a lot. But some of the dialogue was a little weak. I thought some of the story elements were weak. I was yelling at the screen way too much when I was watching this this episode. Like, it's like, oh, we're forced to do this. It's like, no, no, you're not. That doesn't make any sense. You're not forced to do this. Ah, oh, we're forced to go to war now. And it's like, no, I don't see any reason that you would be forced to go to war now. It's like, ah, oh, we have no choice but to stand our ground. It's like, mm, no, I don't see why you would be forced to stand your ground here. The cats are yelling at the other side of this room. Guys, god damn it. I'm just kidding. I'm not feeling well. As far as the enemies, the adversary, the bad guys were the Klingons. Duh. I thought the Klingons were interesting enough. The the story seemed a little. I mean, once again, it's a pilot for God's sake. You know, it's we're going to need to explain more, but we only have so much time, so we've explained it enough in my mind. It didn't seem that goofy or silly to me compared to Star Trek. So it's like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Um, I mean, I liked Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine was my favorite Star Trek, so DS9 was my favorite. And it compares, I think, pretty well. Like, I would have loved to see DS9 with the effects budget of STD. Like, God, that would have been amazing. Oh, that would have been so amazing. And maybe that's kind of the way they're going. They're definitely going for a grittier, a grittier, grimmer tone. It is today. It is now. You can't just do 1960s Star Trek. They tried to do that. It was called Voyager, and I thought it sucked. I mean, it's, you can't. You have to do something. You have to change something or make, create some sort of interesting hook or something. This one, I don't know if the... I can't even define the, the gimmick now, because, like I said, everything that happened in the pilot was just kind of a setup for what is essentially going to be a, another pilot. It's like they got a second chance of doing a pilot. So a lot of stuff got dropped. Tone-wise, it's much gritter, much grimmer. It's got a lot of... I mean, dark, dark tones, people failing, people, you know, needing some sort of uh, redemption where the theme is going. And if that's not your thing, if you want the nice, happy Star Trek, I don't think you're going to get it out of this show. I really don't. I don't see how you could. Tone-wise, like I said, it's, it's dark. It's going to be dark and getting darker. A lot of people get stabbed and murdered. M stabbed, murdered, and shot. Welcome to the future. Good drama comes from conflict. Uh, you need some sort of... 
like a, a striking point, like a, a point of contention. Like we want this, but with this other group here, they want something different. And those two goals conflict with one another. So you have personal conflict you know, we, I have different styles of doing things, or I disagree with your decisions, and, and so on and so forth. Personal, interpersonal conflict. Gene Roddenberry, specifically when he was doing Next Generation, had this idea that human beings don't have interpersonal conflicts anymore. The problem is it leads to very bland character. I mean, it's not the 60s, or for that matter, the 80s anymore. You can't, just can't have a show where people just run around you know, we'll just do good things in the universe with different people in different makeup, people in different weird makeup, and have some sort of sitcom-esque dialogue between one another. Which brings up one other point. I mentioned the tone of this is dark. There was no levity in this show at all. Like, there was, there was no, God, a lot of scowls. A lot of people scowling at each other and, and being upset at stuff. Like, if you're looking for, like, the Orville, and I can't go into this without describing the Orville at least a little bit. Because the the fact that they both came out around the same time, they're both Star Trek-esque shows, one of which is literally a Star Trek. There's an incredible contrast between them. Orville, if you want a lighter, if you want to watch next gen a modern next generation, watch the Orville. If you want to watch something more Deep Space Nine-ish Discovery might be might be more up your alley I think probably because you know once again without spoilers shit just changes at the end of the episode I, once again I think it's because they're saving as much of their old I, I know this show is completely retooled behind the scenes during production they were making one show they stopped and made a completely different show and I suspect this pilot is a result of them trying to keep as much of their old, very expensive footage and sets and all that as they could. Anyway, so we'll see how this show turns. So st I still don't know how this show is going to turn out. We'll see. What are the odds you'll see this and not like it? Pretty good. If you want original Star Trek, you like, and when I say original Star Trek, I mean TOS or... Uh, STNG, this ain't it. This is really not it at all. It doesn't resemble it, it even a little. And from what I understand, it's on. It was created from a different license. Like there, there are two licenses for Star Trek right now: the original Star Trek license, and the license made specifically for the J.J. Abrams first, the three movies. And shockingly, despite the fact that this is made by CBS, it's on CBS All Access, it's actually made under the the J.J. Abrams, which is to say, while it's not directly connected to that, it's not taking place in the Kelvin timeline, at the same time, they're required to make things look different. They have to use a different costumes. They have to make it look, look different. In essence, this is a third iteration of this. This is a completely, this is a reboot. It's a reboot reboot. They're trying to say it's not. They are lying to you. This is a reboot reboot. This is a real reboot. I'd even go so far as to say this is a hard reboot because they're required to change the costumes, the designs. I don't think they can use all of the characters. I mean, this is on a different, different license. They actually have to make it look a little bit like the, t the movie despite the fact it's not connected to the movie. So, if you like the movies, these aren't as, god damn it, as dark as the movies were. This isn't as, as, as light as the movies. So, uh, this is a much darker show. But not in a cool way, not yet anyway. So, you might not like that. And, god, like I could see a lot of people just really not liking this show. <clears throat> it's not for everyone. I think it looks pretty, and I I don't want to watch another original series or next gen. It's not the 80s anymore. I need something more compelling. I don't want one-off episodes. 
So that's, I mean, that's me. Uh, my preference would definitely be for something that does forge ahead. I've mentioned it before. I think Star Trek should do a hard reboot. And this essentially is. They're saying it's not, but this really is a hard reboot. I mean, they they need to come clean and just say, look, this is a hard reboot. We're rebooting Star Trek in a, in a serious way. And that is perfectly, perfectly fine. There is nothing wrong with that. But understand what you're getting into when you start watching the show. Uh, would I see it again? <sighs> I don't know if I'm going to keep watching this show. Uh, I think it's got enough of my interest, and it's pretty enough. I'm going to keep watching it. I'll at least watch the next episode. Like I said, at the very least, to see where the hell it, it actually is going to, the rest of the show is actually going to go. So, yeah, that's it. And that's just, so this is me. Um, I feel like crap. I felt like crap for a while. I'm going to do more videos, but I'm not doing so great health-wise. Uh, I'm babbling. This is me. I'm out.